have no translator? I don't think, but they're right here. It's okay, you can speak international. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the AU Open Forum. Uh, this is uh, so we have been doing this for uh, for many years now, and I'm glad to see uh, many familiar faces here in the room. And it's, uh, it's very encouraging that uh, we have you here uh, all the time during the uh, Global IGF. And um, just to remind everybody, this is uh, a forum where we, as African, we get together, we discuss IG issue in Africa, and we share best practices, and just we learn uh, from each other, and we try to keep everybody informed of uh, initiatives in Africa, various initiatives on IG in Africa. And uh, we uh, tell you where we are, where we are heading in terms of uh, IG in Africa. And um, we are very happy to have you here. Uh, we had a discussion with the uh, IGF Secretariat to make sure that we have, we allocate, they allocate more time for this uh, meeting because uh, as, uh, as time goes, we see more participations and this is something really admirable. Uh, and also, we also requested interpretation because uh, it's not, uh, we, in Africa, we don't only speak English. We have uh, uh, other languages, so we need to make sure at least we have English and French moving forward moving next year, starting next year. Uh, let me just uh, uh, take this opportunity to acknowledge the presence of uh, ministers and uh, parliamentarians. And as, as we say in the EU environment, all protocol observed. Um, last year, we have the African IGF in Chad, and it was really remarkable IGF. We had uh, one of the best IGF uh, so far in terms of uh, the environment in Chad and the number of uh, people attending the IGF. And uh, I would really hope that the other country would take a cue from Chad and try to uh, copy what had uh, happened in uh, Chad. And uh, we take this opportunity to thank the government of Chad and. Uh, all the stakeholders that were involved in making the, uh, the event a uh, successful one. And I uh, take this opportunity also to welcome the Minister for Chad, Dr. Idlis Bashar, and uh, I will give him the floor as a chair of the, of the last African IGF uh, to give a brief statement, Your Excellency. Thank you, Adil. Permettez-moi, avant tout, de remercier l'Union africaine 
et aussi euh, l'ensemble de, de nos pays euh, africains qui ont euh, participé à l'IGF Africa qui a été organisé en Yamena. Euh, comme souligné lors du forum de Yamena, la gouvernance de l'Internet doit être inscrite comme axe principal dans les politiques gouvernementales de nos différents pays. Mais le plus important, on ne doit pas perdre de vue la question de comment combattre la disparité de l'accès à l'Internet. Nous avons des pays spécifiques et cette spécificité fait que nous avons des populations qui se trouvent dans des zones un peu rurales et ces zones rurales de l'Afrique sont un peu délaissées et qu'à travers l'Union africaine et euh, avec nos différents pays, nous ne devrons pas vraiment perdre de vue la question de l'accès à ces populations. Comme ça a été souligné aussi lors de IGF Africa, euh, qui était organisé en Yamena, euh, la question de coût euh, doit être vraiment euh, une question centrale et que euh, nous devrons trouver des de, de solutions de commun accord, euh, en tout cas avec nos différentes instances, et euh, les coûts doivent être réglementés et doivent être orientés vers le coût réel. Euh, je crois qu'on devrait remercier aussi l'Union africaine à travers le projet PRIDA, et nous pensons qu'avec ce projet, euh, nous pourrons mettre en place et euh, exécuter les recommandations qui étaient euh, ressorties lors du forum euh, IGF Africa de Ndiamena. Euh, pour finir, je crois que euh, c'est un forum très bien reçu et la réussite euh, dépendait pas simplement de l'organisation, mais de la participation de tous les pays africains. Chacun a euh, ramené euh, son expérience et ces expériences nous ont permis d'avoir des recommandations. Et aujourd'hui, nous sommes ensemble ici à l'IGF mondial pour euh, défendre un peu nos recommandations et faire entendre la voix de l'Afrique à travers l'Union africaine. Donc je remercie une fois de plus euh, l'Union africaine et euh, je, je me permettrai, je crois, euh, d'intervenir lorsque euh, les recommandations seront présentées par euh, Mme Alima, qui était la présidente d'organisation de l'IGF Africa, et euh, nous allons y débattre. Mais euh, la, 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 la question la plus importante, c'est que ces recommandations, il va falloir qu'on trouve des solutions et ces solutions, ça doit être contextualité euh, des solutions orientées à l'Afrique. Merci beaucoup et euh, une fois de plus, nous restons à votre disposition et euh, dès que le rapport sera présenté, nous allons euh, donner des éléments si possible. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for the statement. Uh, let me just remind you of uh, program for today. Um, we are going to have a, a kind of a briefing on the uh, African IGF that took place in chat, uh, followed by a statement by the, the MAG chair, and uh, uh, also another statement from Mr. McCann-Fai uh, on the way forward. And we are going to, to dedicate uh, more time for uh, an African Union initiative called PRIDA. I think they, His Excellency uh, referred to this initiative, and we want to keep you up to date on this initiative. Uh, and uh, we have more interactions from you. Uh, we tell you where we are, where we are heading, and uh, uh, hopefully we can get uh, more valuable feedback from the, from, from the floor. Let me also... Uh, take this opportunity to congratulate the new IGF MAG, MAG uh, Ms. Henriette Esterheide. Henriette, please stand up. Stand up, Henriette. Stand up so that some people don't know you who are new here. May <laughs> Um, thank you very much, um, Adil. All I can say is that I, I would not have been selected if not for your support and I really need your support going forward. The MAG chair has a limited mandate 
but at least one of the things I want to bring to the IGF MAG is greater inclusion and participation of African stakeholders from all sectors, governments, business, civil society. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's, uh, let's work together so that we have the next uh, after Poland, we will have the, Africa, uh, the uh, global IGF in Africa. So let's, let's have this as a goal moving forward. And uh, we are going to rely on, your, on you f to uh, help us a lot uh, uh, with regard to this session. For instance, we need more time. We need interpretation. So this is in to-do list for you from now on. So um, let me give the floor to Ms. Alima uh, Ali to, give, to walk us through uh, the event that took place in N'Djamena. Uh, thank you, Adil. The presentation is in English, but I will present it in French <laughs> to permit uh, speak fr uh, French speaker to understand something. Uh, merci beaucoup, Adil. Uh, la présentation est en anglais, je la ferai en français pour que on puisse mieux la partager. Donc, mon, mon pays, le Tchad, a eu donc l'honneur d'accueillir le huitième forum africain sur la gouvernance de l'Internet qui s'est tenu en Djamena du 10 au 12 septembre 2019 sous le thème « Responsabilité partagée des parties prenantes pour un écosystème de gouvernance de l'Internet robuste ». Ce huitième forum africain sur la gouvernance de l'Internet a été précédé par quelques événements. Donc, comme pré-event, nous avons eu la septième édition de l'African School Internet Governance, École africaine de la gouvernance de l'Internet, qui s'est déroulée du 5 au 9 septembre et qui a accueilli une cinquantaine de participants venant de tous les continents et au-delà. Nous avons eu également le premier forum euh, sur la gouvernance de l'Internet des jeunes qui s'est déroulé le 10 septembre. Et il y a eu la session de l'IGF national du Tchad qui s'est déroulée donc à la veille du forum le 9 septembre. Euh, pour ce qui est de l'événement lui-même, nous avons eu les cérémonies d'ouverture et de clôture qui étaient placées sous le patronage de son Excellence Idriss Déby Itno, président de la République du Tchad, chef de l'État et en présence du vice-président de la Commission de l'Union africaine, du représentant de la secrétaire exécutive de la Commission économique des Nations unies pour l'Afrique et un parterre de personnalités au niveau national. Euh, pour tout le forum, nous avons eu 12 sessions plénières et 5 sessions parallèles qui ont débattu donc des thématiques autour du thème global qui est donc le partage des responsabilités pour un écosystème de gouvernance robuste de l'Internet. La particularité de l'IGF Afrique 2019, c'est que c'est pour la première fois qu'un pays africain francophone accueillait le forum. Et c'est pour la première fois également que le forum africain venait en Afrique centrale. Euh, au niveau de la participation, nous avons eu près de 800 participants, au total 748, venant de 45 pays, 44 pays africains, et le représentant de Diplo Foundation qui nous est venu de la Serbie. Euh, il y a eu également euh, l'IGF des jeunes qui s'est tenu à la veille donc, du, du forum. Et à la clôture, nous avons eu la cérémonie donc, de reconnaissance à l'endroit de trois personnes qui ont donc, euh, participé ou contribué au développement de l'Internet au niveau de... Donc nous avons eu au terme donc du, du forum la cérémonie de reconnaissance de trois personnalités qui ont contribué au développement de l'Internet au niveau du continent. Nous avons M. Rida Gelous de la Tunisie qui était le premier à proposer en 1998 euh, à la conférence des plénis potentiels de l'UIT à Indianapolis qui a donc proposé la tenue du sommet mondial sur la société de l'information et qui a permis donc de discuter des questions de l'émergence de l'Internet et des télécoms qui étaient en pleine mutation. Et il y a eu également M. Mokhtar Yedali, 
qui est le chef de division de la société de l'information au niveau de la commission de l'Union africaine, et M. Makan Fay, qui était donc le ex-chef de la division, section de la commission économique des Nations unies pour l'Afrique. Et ces deux étaient les premiers à proposer donc la création de l'IGF Afrique, dont le Tchad a organisé la huitième audition. Donc c'était pour reconnaître et saluer les efforts qu'ils ont faits et encourager ces questions d'Internet qui étaient donc débattues à travers le, le forum africain. Next. Donc pour ce qui est de, des participants, euh, la majorité des participants, soit 52%, euh, venaient de, du monde de l'enseignement supérieur. C'était soit des étudiants, soit c'était des, des formateurs. 25% des participants venaient de la société civile. 10% venaient de, du secteur gouvernemental ou public. 5% du secteur privé. 3% du secteur de, des médias. 1% était du monde académique et euh, 4% qui étaient venus d'autres secteurs, soit des secteurs euh, associatifs ou des, des ONG. Next. Euh, pour ce qui est de la représentation, nous avons 78% des participants qui étaient masculins et 22% de, de participation féminine. Aussi, pour ce qui est de, des groupes d'âge, euh, les 64% des participants du, de l'IGF de N'Djamena étaient jeunes et les adultes représentaient 66% donc de, de participants à ce IGF Afrique. Euh, au niveau de la distribution donc géographique des participants, comme le forum s'est déroulé dans un pays de l'Afrique centrale, les 62% des participants qui étaient à N'Djamena venaient de différents pays de l'Afrique centrale. 10% venaient de l'Afrique de l'Est, 2% de l'Afrique du Nord et 7% de l'Afrique du Sud et 19% de l'Afrique de l'Ouest. Et comme je l'ai dit, donc on avait eu la, la cérémonie de reconnaissance. Donc ça, c'était le trophée qui était décerné aux trois personnalités africaines qui ont contribué à, à la création donc, du sommet euh, mondial sur la société de l'information et de l'IGF euh, africain qui permet donc depuis huit ans déjà de discuter des questions de gouvernance de l'Internet sur euh, le continent africain pour lui donc au Forum mondial. Euh, pour ce qui est de, du sponsor, le huitième Forum africain a été organisé par la Commission de l'Union africaine en collaboration donc avec le gouvernement de la République du Tchad. Et au niveau international, il y a eu la le sponsoring, le, le support de, de PRIDA, de APC, de la Commission économique des Nations unies pour l'Afrique, de Internet Society, ICANN, de Internet Governance Forum Support Association et de Afrinic. Au niveau national, nous avons donc euh, la prise en charge qui a été prise intégralement par euh, l'ARCEP, l'Autorité de régulation des communications électroniques et des postes au Tchad et l'Agence de développement des TIC. Donc, la DETIC et l'Agence de développement des infrastructures était ici pour le, le Tchad. Donc, euh, voilà pour ce qui est un peu du, du forum qui s'est déroulé à N'Djamena et qui a été donc euh, assorti de plusieurs recommandations qu'on partagera tout à l'heure avec l'équipe du secrétariat. Merci. Thank you, thank you very much, Alima. Uh, as you can see, uh, so many firsts. Uh, the first African youth. IGF, a statement, uh, declaration by the elderly, and, and so, so much. And uh, what struck me from the presentation that two-thirds of the participants were uh, young people. So this is something really, really uh, inspiring. Um, uh, we uh, move next to a statement by the uh, current uh, MAC chair, African, I African IGF MAC chair, Ms. Uh, Mary Duma. Bonjour, Africa, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mary Uduma. I'm the current um, AFIGF MAC chair, and I want to say that I'm excited to see the number of people that are in this room, and uh, I also want to see such number as we go on to the uh, Africa IGF 2020. 
though location and time has not been fixed, but I want people to bear that in mind that we have Africa IGF 2020. Before I continue, I just want to say thank you to the Honorable Minister from Chad and other ministers here and parliamentarians that are here to be with us at uh, this short period. And um, we also want to say that Africa Mark Chair is producing the Global Mark Chair this 2020. So that's another thing we are celebrating. So we celebrate all of you. And we want to see more countries run their national IGFs. Um, for now, and not all the countries in Africa or states in Africa um, have started uh, their IGF process, national IGF processes. So we want to see that happen come 2020. But for Africa IGF, um, the hosting was great as the report has been said. From University Hostel in 2013, we were, um, we were accommodated uh, at a fast, fast five-star hotel, and which is a, a great leap, quantum leap from what we used to, ha to have. From non-government high level to the highest uh, uh, government level in the country, at the presidency level, participated at the Chad IGF and Africa IGF. And so we are so much grateful to the Chadian. And in a short space of time, they were able to put together, pull together such a great hosting. Thank you again, Chad. From less than 50, 150 participants, we had, there was a day the hall was almost 1,000 people. And it was a great time for us. And um, uh, we, we had, we, we could see that uh, the bar has been raised and also the competition to host is stiff. So if you, are not, if you are not careful, it might be difficult to get there. But we don't want to lower the standard. We want to go with that standard. Uh, the big bang of launching the youth IGF was the icing in the cake of um, Africa IGF in Chad, and it was a big one, it was a good one, and uh, so many youth came around to say, Mama, how will I be part of IGF? And so, some of them are still writing me, and we are communicating, and it was a good experience for us. Local participation was very great. Over 50% of participants, or 70% of participants were from Chad, and that's what we want other African countries to do. Whenever we are coming to your country to host the Africa IGF, we want to see participants, the local participants, so that they can understand. And again, the capacity building was very good. The um, Africa School of on Internet Governance, and thanks again to uh, Arieta and her team, APC and uh, Prida, for bringing um, participants to the school from all over Africa, except those that were not able to make it. It was an opportunity for everybody to be there. And most African countries were there to be trained and to build their capacity. So uh, that local particip participation we want to see continue in 2020 and also for, for you, to be part of uh, global IGF. Uh, it was not only that we were doing physical meeting, there was remote participation, and which created opportunity for those that are not uh, present to be able to connect with us and be able to share what we're, uh, we're, we're doing there. Um, we saw more sponsors in the 2019 uh, Africa IGF, and we're hoping that more would join to sponsor us. We want to see the, the, uh, the business sector be more active. Africa and the, and the rest, we want to see more of you at the Africa IGF and um, uh, businesses in Africa to be able to sponsor the Africa IGF. And when we have more sponsorship, we have more people participating and we have the, the dialogue with all and uh, we share our common goal and we take a common position that we'll, take, we'll bring to the global IGF. So um, the, the shortfall or the, the flip side is communication was a problem. So it made me think of what do we do to bridge the communication gap? gap. So heads of, when we get back to our, to our countries, we should, 
we should make um, two languages or three languages in Africa to be composed with so that we can always communicate. You can see that I'm, I'm not sure my colleagues from the French speaking do understand what I'm saying, but you, you know, it, it, it's a challenge for us. So, and um, I'm happy that um, AU has taken it upon themselves that we would um, have interpretation by next time we are, we are in such forum. So I want to welcome all of you, and I want to tell you that 2020 is by the corner, and we are going to call upon you to be part of 2020 Africa IGF. And um, yeah, the, 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 the country will soon be announced, and the, and the, and the, and the date also. So I'll leave that to Makan to continue from there. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mary. Um, now I give the floor to Makan to talk about the way forward. On thank you, Africa. Mary. Uh, thank you all for coming to this our uh, uh, forum. Uh, I will uh, move at the hosting uh, issue. Uh, you know, the uh, Africa IGF takes, takes place uh, every year between end of June and uh, end of November for three days in an African country. And the process to host is uh, that the bid will be prepared in Arabic, English, French, uh, and put on the African, and uh, Portuguese, and put on the African uh, IGF website, uh, sent to all stakeholders also by email. And uh, criteria are put on the bid, and any country meeting the criteria you can uh, bid for uh, hosting. And the bid is sent by an African uh, government or uh, an African government institution submitted to the AU Commission. Uh, bid is uh, not yet sent, but some, we have some countries who, which have uh, vied to host the next African IGF in 2020. Uh, the bid will be sent out uh, uh, early uh, January uh, and when the bid is uh, accepted, the criteria are accepted, uh, then a MOU will be signed by, between the African Union Commission and the uh, uh, host country. As was stated earlier by uh, uh, Mary and uh, Adil, the bar is set very high by Chad, and uh, we hope that the next uh, host will uh, follow suit or else we'll go back to Chad. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Makan, for the statement. Um, now we move to the initiative that I spoke about in the beginning, which is uh, PRIDA, the Policy Regulation Initiative for Digital Africa. This is, uh, there was at the uh, AU leadership, it was felt that Africa participation in the global uh, debate is uh, on IG debates uh, is low and uh, something has to be done. So we thought about uh, PRIDA uh, and uh, in, in, as you can see the logo, the European Union Commission is assisting uh, with PRIDA uh, and supporting the, the PRIDA for, for which we are very uh, uh, thankful. Uh, but PRIDA basically uh, has two tracks. Uh, we are building capacity for Africans, all the stakeholders in Africa. Uh, we're also making sure that uh, countries who don't have uh, IGF, uh, we are enabling and promoting IGF at the national level. So I give the floor to my colleague, Dr. Nambura, to walk us through the PRIDA initiative. Thank you, Adin. Uh, PRIDA is a policy and regulation initiative for digital Africa. And uh, the next, as my colleague has said, uh, it is an initiative. Let's go to the next slide. It is an initiative of the African Union, the European Union, and the International Telecommunication Union that has three main tracks or three main objectives. The first one being uh, to address various dimensions of broadband demand and supply in Africa, monitoring and evaluation and harmonization of ICT, telecommunication policies, legal and regulatory frameworks, 
And the third track is streamlining the internet governance structures and processes and building the capacities of African Union member states in the IG space. We go to the next slide, please. Okay, I'll still continue. So Prida Internet Governance uh, Implementation Strategy has two tracks, as uh, it has been said. The first one being to strengthen the IG structures and processes at the national, regional, and continental level. And by this, uh, we are streamlining the policy development process at all these levels. Again, we are coordinating Africans' participation in IG matters at the global level. The second main track is to build capacity and develop build and develop capacity and offer coaching services to the internet community and diplomats of member states. And in this, what we are doing is to strengthen the ability of African stakeholders to actively participate in the global internet governance processes, that is both policy and technical debates, and to develop negotiation skills of our state members before and during international meetings where decisions are taken. Uh, the next slide where we have the actors and workflows. Uh, please go to the other slides. And at the apex, we have the African Union Commission. Uh, and at the national level, we are working with the PRIDA focal points. Uh, and we are working with the national convenience. At the regional level, we are working with the regional economic communities and uh, regional convenience. Then we have the Continental Africa IGF, that is, uh, whose secretariat is hosted by the African Commission, that invo informs the global processes. So what we are working on is to streamline the processes from the national to the regional to the continental, and then inform the global processes. So what has PRIDA done so far? Uh, at the beginning of the year, there were three studies work that were commissioned between April and July. And uh, these studies looked at uh, challenges of uh, active participation by the Africans in the global uh, IG decision-making processes. So that is, uh, we are a bit uh, behind in that, but basically that is what I discussed below, uh, before, the, the various actors that we are working with. So what we have done so far is that we have done three studies that uh, between April and July, and the focus was to understand the challenges. Why are we not in the global processes, both at the policy level and the technical level? And uh, we also developed uh, an IGF toolkit that is available in both French and English to help uh, at the national, at the regional, uh, both national, regional, and continental level, the whole process of organizing an IGF. Uh, again, we are developing contextualized uh, training modules that uh, we are working with the Diplo Foundation. The other output we have is the PRIDA Internet Governance Implementation Strategy, which we are discussing now. It is a draft as it uh, is per now, but should be finalized very soon. And uh, under the harmonization of national, regional, and continental IGFs, what we have done is the IGF toolkit should be able to streamline the processes in all the 55 countries. And these are toolkit to be used for those countries that do not have an IGF. Uh, at the moment, there are 29 countries with an IGF. So uh, from the 55, there are still 20 plus countries that we need to focus on. We want to rationalize scheduling of IGFs uh, and internet uh, government schools from 2020 to ensure that all the national IGFs are held between January and June of each year, starting from next year. Again, we want to ensure that regional IGFs are held between July and September, and to ensure that the continental IGF is held in October. PRIDA is offering support at the, for the regional internet governance schools and regional IGFs. We already did this with the East Africa IGF and uh, the ECAS IGF. And uh, capacity building and development. Uh, we have already developed 11 modules, uh, training modules on internet governance, and they were tested in May this year. And we have already trained 70 regional trainers that we are using at the regional level to ensure that uh, we expand the numbers and build capacities at the national and regional level. Uh, in collaboration with Diplo, we are contextualizing the content for internet community and diplomats to ensure that while we are thinking global, we are again taking cognizance of our challenges at the country level so that uh, we harmonize that and ensure we move hand in hand. So what are the next steps for PRIDA? We need to finalize the IG implementation strategy. 
We are working on a study on sustainability of internet governance trainings, and that again we are doing with the Diplo Foundation. Support and creation of national IGFs where they do not exist, and continue supporting regional and continental IGFs. We are uh, developing contextualized online and offline training models for the internet community with embedded certification. Again, these will be available in both French and English. We are developing contextualized online and offline training models for diplomats. And again, these will have an embedded certification, both in English and French. We are working uh, on a digital platform that will be hosted by the African Union Commission. And we are developing a framework for digital policy clinic for on-demand coaching. Uh, on both uh, technical and policy issues. And finally, we are fostering communities of practice around internet governance composed of researchers, practitioners, technical experts, and policy makers. And that's about Prida. Thank you. That, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nayabura. Uh, uh, I think the key takeaway here, there is a pre IG strategy. Uh, we uh, we ask you to be uh, all involved in the implementation of the strategy. I think the aim is to make sure that Africa participate in the global debate with one voice. I think the idea, we wanted to make sure that at the country level, we have a coherent policy development process, and then you move up to the regions and uh, at the continental level. So when we reach to the African IGF, then we will have a one voice, uh, or at least a common position, on various issues uh, in uh, the IG space. So this is something that we, uh, I think, we all inspire to have uh, achieving. And uh, I think it's very important. At the national level, we have a coherent policy development process. And at the continent level, we have a common position when we come to different uh, uh, debates uh, pertaining to uh, IG. Uh, I think we have 20 minutes. We're going to open the floor for Q&As. And uh, I think this is one of the things that um, just reminding the next chair, Mark Chair, that we needed more time for our, for our uh, session. And, and, uh, and I cannot stress enough the uh, interpretation. Uh, I think Sorry. I start with Coralie. And then we have this gentleman. Introduce yourself. Please, please introduce yourself and then uh, briefly the question because we need to have more people participating. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je pense que je peux me permettre de parler en français. Je vais demander à Macan de traduire. Euh, <coughs> moi, je m'appelle Coroné Massani. Je suis député national à l'Assemblée nationale du Niger. Je suis président de la Commission affaires étrangères et la coopération. Et nous sommes en train de préparer un forum. Euh, euh, dans l'espace CDAO qui s'appelle Forum euh, euh, sur la cybercriminalité, euh, la lutte contre la cybercriminalité dans l'espace CDAO. J'interviens non seulement pour féliciter euh, les différents intervenants qui ont fait un grand effort pour nous amener, en tout cas pour euh, permettre à l'Afrique d'aller de l'avant, mais nous allons nous aussi apporter notre contribution en organisant ce forum en collaboration avec le Parlement de la CDAO. Et nous sommes en train d'associer aussi l'Union africaine, la CEA, le PNUD et bien d'autres partenaires. Et je profite de l'occasion pour inviter euh, euh, tous les participants qui sont ici. Et nous venons, je suis le président du comité scientifique du forum et nous venons de mettre euh, depuis hier euh, M. Makan Fay comme membre de ce comité scientifique en tant que coordinateur du Forum euh, africain, donc euh, par son canal, les différentes euh, régions de l'Afrique seront touchées incessamment et vous êtes tous invités à Niamey. Et ce sera du 16 au 20 janvier 2020, sous le haut patronage du président du Parlement de la CDAO et pourquoi pas euh, de l'Union africaine quand on va commencer, parce qu'on vient de commencer les pourparlers avec l'Union africaine. Voilà ce que je veux dire, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for very good moderation. And I take this early opportunity to also thank the presenters for some very wonderful presentations on internet uh, governance uh, forums in Africa. And on the subject of the day, 
even as I commend this good turnout here today of uh, Africans in this room, I'd like to remind us of the important role that legislation has to play in internet governance in our continent. And there are parliaments that are actually uh, taking the lead to start legislating on laws that are not only internet friendly, but are also um, uh, leading into a better space uh, in the internet that is safer and moderated content. Uh, we have a good delegation uh, from Kenya, and I would take this opportunity to report some few things that Kenya has been able to do in the last year. Kenya parliament has been able to pass four pieces of legislation in the last two years. And these pieces of legislation range from a number of issues that have to do with internet governance. We have been able to pass the Kenya Data Protection Act. We have been able to amend the Kenya Information and Communication uh, Act. We have been able to pass the Kenya Copyright Act, which was an amendment bill. And we have also been able to pass a very groundbreaking law in Africa, the Computer Misuse and Cybercrime Bill, uh, which, uh, of course, offers a safer space on the internet. There's a good issue also that was raised about the language that Africa internet will be speaking. And I'd like uh, to remind us about the words that were spoken by a great African leader who told us that if you speak to me in English or French or Arabic, you're speaking to my mind. But if you speak to me in my native vernacular language, you're speaking to my heart. And that is why I'm excited about what is happening in Kenya when I see that I can go on Google and do an entire search and browsing and surfing in Swahili. Because then we are taking um, the internet right to the people who need to use it into the future. Uh, finally, I'd like to just uh, recognize um, members of parliament in the room from Kenya. We have right there, Honorable Antonio Loach, a member of parliament from the city. We have the Honorable James Gedua Wamashukuru from Kabete constituency. And sitting right next to me is Honorable Major Bashir, who was a former soldier and um, a big uh, advocate of uh, internet governance. And we've got staffers and members of public from Kenya. I'd just like to recognize that they're in the room that uh, we've got people from Kenya. Kindly stand up. So Kenya is decidedly Kenya is decidedly uh, wanting to lead the way in internet governance, and uh, we like what you say about internet governance forums at national levels. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, please, next time, introduce yourself uh, before you uh, raise, uh, make the comment or ask questions. Uh, I think you're bringing a very good point. I will, I will Can I introduce have... myself? Yes, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderators. I'm very sorry for that. My name is Honorable John K.J. Carey. I'm a member of parliament, and I sit in the Committee of Information, Communication, and Innovation in the Kenya parliament. Thank and you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you very Thank much. You. And, 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 and I think this is exactly why we, we, need, we want and need IGFs at the national level. We need to be able to link the debate uh, during the IGFs to ongoing processes at the national level so that you have direct impact on the processes and somehow the voice that is formed within the multi-stakeholder discussion is heard when you do legislation and so forth. I give the floor to our friend here, um, the CEO, and then the lady, the CEO of uh, Africa, and the uh, lady here. And I think there are some people at the back. I think let's also take some. Uh, yes, the, the, and then here, OK? So thank you. Thank one, you, Adil. Wait, one, two, and remote. three, remote. and then three, and four at the back. Remote. And then uh, we get some questions from remote. Yeah. Thank you, Adil and uh, Makain. Um, I, I think uh, at this uh, AU Open Forum, it's only appropriate that uh, we give feedback to you on uh, the progress on one of the tasks, the project that we are undertaking on behalf of the African Union. So uh, 
whilst my colleague, the Honorable uh, KJ, uh, introduced uh, the uh, honorable members from the Parliament of uh, Kenya, I would like also to recognize my uh, honorable Deputy Minister <laughs> from South Africa, uh, Ms. Kekana. So, I'd like to give you feedback on Dot Africa domain name, where we stand today. In terms of history, in 2012, we were appointed by the African Union to administrate uh, the Dot Africa domain name. 2014, we signed an agreement with ICANN for the same. And in 2016, unfortunately, the litigation commenced, which cost us close to 3 million US dollars. And uh, in 2017, this is only then we commenced the delegation of uh, Dot Africa. In 2018, there was a Dot Africa Foundation that was established. The Dot Africa Foundation had a key mandate of addressing issues of local content, development of uh, registrars across the continent, development of CCTLDs, and the Pan African ICT program. All the funds, when you acquire a Dot Africa domain name, the funds go towards the foundation, a percentage of that. And in 2019, the litigation was over. So we are only happy today to tell you that the litigation is history. We have finally prevailed. Dot Africa is now an African project. It belongs to all of us, and I hope nothing will deter us going forth. Next steps is to capacitate and launch the foundation. We are looking to do that in uh, DRC Congo in 2020 during the AIS, which is the Africa Internet Summit. We'll launch uh, Dot Africa. And we're going to continue creating awareness in line with the OR Tambo, the Abuja and Shamil Sheikh declarations. These are the declarations that are pivotal for our domain name. And now we are working towards the release of AU.Africa from ICANN reserve list so that the African Union community can have their own domain name under AU.Africa away from AU.Int. Now we are only happy that this will be realized next year. And uh, for now, I want to implore, urge, request the African community to now register for your domain name under Dot Africa, uh, make your presence in this digital space of Africa, and acquire a beautiful name under Dot Africa. Uh, I thank you. Thank you very much. I, I think it's it's uh, it's a no-brainer. I think we need to have our own identity in the in this in the digital space, and Dot Africa is the perfect example for, for our identity. I give this floor to the lady here, the young lady. Um, good afternoon. My name is Linda Bonio. Um, I come from Kenya, from the Lawyers Hub. We are a policy innovation hub for lawyers, the first in Africa. And I have two comments. One is a question. Um, is IGF open to collaborate with the private sec sector efforts to bridge the technology and policy gap? I ask this because we are putting together an Africa Law Tech Festival in March 2019 to bridge the gap between law and technology. And um, we're doing this in Nairobi from the 6th to the 11th of March next year. I would be very open to hear if we could collaborate on running the internet governance classes as well as speaking engagements. And we're working together with AfriLabs um, on this. And two, I would like to differ with a few points my honorable has mentioned as regarding the regulation sector. And I would want to just indicate here that it's, it's not proper to continue to stifle the internet in Kenya, like the introduction of social media regulation requiring bloggers to register and even the punitive regulations you're bringing across on drones, yet Rwanda is delivering medicines on drones already. I think it's important that ministers walk the talk, and even as they report that they say the truth on the ground. Um, I think we can do better, Kenya as a country, and that we enable people to innovate. You just introduced 16% taxation on e-commerce, the same as for brick and mortar companies. I think you need to walk the talk and make the sector in Kenya good for innovation. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. My name is Dorothy Gordon, and I'm the chair of the Intergovernmental Council for UNESCO's Information for All program. I think that the, what we've heard today is really inspiring. Um, I just want to remind everyone here that you have representation at UNESCO where many important issues are also being decided. 
and that it will be very important for civil society, private sector, as well as those government uh, um, representatives that are here to make sure that your ambassadors at that level are briefed. The question I actually wanted to ask is in listening to the presentation of the PRIDA, it was not clear to me how you address the very concerning issue of gender and representation of women. Wh whereas Chad was very impressive, we see that the numbers of women represented were very low. So it's clear that we need some special support to ensure that we build up the numbers of women. Could you just clarify a bit more on what is being done? Thank you. We have, couple of, we have two questions at the back, or I think one question, and then we take question from the online. Hello, uh, good afternoon Africans and friends of Africa. My name is Keith Andere, I'm from Kenya. Um, and um, the re youth representative of the African IGF MAG. I do not want to water down what uh, my colleagues have said as far as uh, the African uh, youth internet uh, governance is concerned. I uh, just want to encourage all of you that um, Africa is youth and um, we can make much more um, interventions and conversations as far as IGF is concerned if we support young people uh, at national levels. So I'm calling upon everyone who's in the room, conveners of national IGF, to support uh, youth initiatives at uh, national level so that we can have meaningful conversation at global level, uh, at regional level. Thank you so much. I don't know if you have questions from the remote participation. Who's, uh, do we have any questions from remote participation? Okay. All right. So I think before we proceed, I think there were a couple of questions that were asked uh, regarding private sector participation in the IG sp uh, space. Yes, definitely. And I, I, I think we need to go beyond the classic, the classical stakeholder group, and. Um, and do mapping based on issues. Whatever issues that you are discussing, you want to debate on, you do mapping and see who uh, has more stake in that process, and then you invite them. So I, I'm pretty sure that you're going to capture uh, people who are really have a lot of stake in the process and who are really interested in the subject. So if you are doing something pertaining to private sector, definitely they're going to be one of the key uh, stakeholders presented. Uh, the question in, regards, uh, in regard to gender, I think uh, we, we are trying, but, I, uh, but this is a, uh, an invitation to everybody to uh, give us ideas. But what we are trying to do when we organize meetings, workshops, and so forth, we are, all, we are always mindful of gender representation in our meeting, trainings, and so forth. Oftentimes, we are faced with low application from, the, from women. And, and they, we are find ourselves in a dilemma where, for instance, you open an application, and then you get only 10% uh, women respondent. So and in which case, then you are. But we, are, we, re, we recognize the issue, and we are open to ideas and thought uh, so that we can improve on that aspect. Uh, I think uh, the uh, Honorable Minister, uh, if you want to have a statement, you're okay. Let me give the floor to the Deputy Minister from South Africa. Chair, thank you very much. And, and I think I want to really appreciate this opportunity and congratulate the initiative, especially to make sure that Africa uh, as a continent is not left behind in the internet governance space. Two things that I want to propose, Chair. We had World Radio Conference, the Africa version in South Africa, and the SG is from Kenya, Mr. Omo. One of the things that he did in a, for attendance of that conference was to say, every country that want to participate at least one delegation must be a woman. So once we start to do that, we create an opportunity for women to be part of this kind of uh, 
conferences, exposure, but also deliberately wanting them to be active uh, participants. So we're saying Africa has a youth dividend, but the whole continent, women are, are in majority. So let's walk the talk along, along those lines. The second issue, Chair, is that we have the Pan-African Parliament. Now, PRIDA, it's a brainchild of the AU Commission, and all what we are doing, the support by the AU Commission. Harmonization of policies and legislation. Let's also use the PAP platform for us to synergize, because there are areas of mutual interest, especially countries that are along the coastline, where we need to synergize some of the things that we want to do. So let's also use the Pan-African Parliament to fast track some of the policies and regulations, because we're not starting from scratch. There are codes of good practices from other countries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, point well taken. Uh, let's take a question from this side. My friend, and uh, Husham. I think, uh, unfortunately, we are running out of time. We, we almost, the time is up. But let's take these two questions and, and, and we conclude. Clear. Judy, go ahead, please. Thank you, Adil. Okay. Thank you, Adil. Um, my name is Judy from Kenya. Um, thank you for the presentations. My question regards um, persons with disability. Um, I would really like to see, or rather to hear, what the Africa IGF intends to do regarding persons with disability. Because even as it is, even the, um, the Africa IGF website cannot be read by a screen reader. And so I, I would like to know the way forward on that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Adil. And uh, I want to congratulate you on the team working on uh, BIDA for achieving this milestone on the project. Um, my name is uh, Hisham Abul Yazid. Uh, I'm with the uh, NTR AE, the National Telecom uh, Regulator of uh, Egypt. Um, and I'm, I'm also part of the PIDA uh, IG focal points uh, across the continent. I, um, I, I wanted just to take uh, a moment, um, of course, to congratulate Anayat on the other side of the table for her appointment as uh, the new MAG uh, chair. Uh, congratulations, Anayat. Uh, th this, is, this is an important moment for Africa, and I want to link this also to, uh, to the efforts uh, for the BIDA. Um, at the moment, we are, uh, for, as a continent, I would say we are very lucky to have um, a presentation at the highest level in terms of the uh, IGF MAG, uh, the global IGF. And we have also two representatives at the ICANN GAC, the Governmental Advisory Group, uh, as uh, Manal Ismail of uh, Egypt and uh, Jack Kodaig of uh, Burkina Faso as chair and vice chair, uh, respectively. So I, I, I was wondering if, may, if maybe in the uh, next stages of uh, PIDA program we can, we can put more focus also on organizations like uh, GAC in ICANN and how we can assist representatives from across Africa. And I, I want also to capitalize on uh, the presence of uh, uh, high-level dignitaries from uh, different countries across the continent to perhaps to shape a message from this open forum on the need to uh, make resources available for Africa to participate in these forums. Um, th there are a number of themes, whether at IGF or at ICANN, that we, we cannot just miss out on. Uh, just on the other, in the other room this morning, it was the consultation on the uh, digital cooperation that was uh, launched by the uh, UN Secretary General. And uh, there's, there's a lot for the African countries to comment on and to engage on. So I, I, I was hoping that maybe, Adil, we can also introduce a component on these two tags uh, regarding ICANN, GAC, and 
digital cooperation as well in the next stages. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Point well taken. Um, Judith, uh, I think we want to solicit your um, help. And uh, I think you will be a very good uh, candidate to give us insight and ideas on the subject so that we can improve uh, the situation uh, in the African IGF environment. Okay. So I think finally I give the floor. I think we have a, a request here on this side. I give the floor. And I, I, the debate is really interesting, and we are getting, we just getting started. But unfortunately, time is not on our side. I think uh, this will, this will be the last comment, uh, and then we close after that. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Nanakufi Asafwedu, the IGF coordinator for Ghana National IGF, and also the Peter uh, focal focal point. I'd like to say that uh, this year, Ghana had the, the maiden youth IGF um, in, in, in Ghana, and also as part of the national IGF, we, we talked about a lot of the very relevant issues. But um, before I continue, I want to also make you aware that we have a great delegation from Ghana, including two women. So there's a, could you please stand up and get a, a hand clap. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in Ghana in terms of uh, inclusion and cybersecurity in Ghana right now. Uh, we have the Universal Access Fund, which has digital literacy training going on. There's a rural telephony spreading uh, the internet into the remote areas. And uh, our minister in particular is very, very keen to include women. So we are actually doing the, uh, a Miss Geek uh, Ghana contest, which is going to tie into the Miss Geek um, Africa to encourage women into ICT, because we believe that the more women we have in, in IT, the more are going to be represented at the IGF level. So um, I just wanted you to be aware of that. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I, I think we are way past time, but I will give the floor to this lady very briefly, and then we have a couple of announcements. Uh, people want to uh, invite people for events. Uh, it's going to be done by Hussam, and then there is somebody from that side also want to make an announcement. Briefly, please, very briefly. Um, thank you, Chair, for recognizing. My name is Doreen Mugwena. I'm from the South African Domain Name Authority. Um, first of all, I would like to recognize uh, the South African delegation, which is our the Deputy Minister, um, the .zna CO and the ZACRCO as well. South Africa recently had the fifth national internet governance in October. And um, for the first time ever, we had the first inaugural of the School of Internet Governance. And we had a turnout of about 50 students. And it was um, bearing the multi-stakeholder model. We had representation from all sectors as well. And another thing that the South African uh, government, in terms of internet governance, that has pushed thus far is to, um, is to put through the cyber crimes bill uh, to parliament for deliberation and we also have the prevention and combating of hate speech bill that is uh, due to, uh, for deliberation in Parliament and we also have the, uh, the Popeye Act as well and we need to be uh, cognizant of the fact that South Africa is finalizing the report of the fourth industrial revolution as it's actually in full swing right now and next year we will have the second phase of the School of Internet Governance, uh, seeing that the first pilot was successfully carried, and we do appreciate what the um, Africa School of Internet Governance is doing because we have taken the model from them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hussam. Uh, 
Yes, quickly. Thank you very much, Adil. Uh, my name is Hussam Gamal. I'm the chairman of the African ICT Alliance, AFICTA, which gather uh, members, uh, SMEs and companies, private sector from uh, 30 countries in Africa. Uh, just to announce that we are organizing a session, a workshop for Africa uh, and developing countries uh, in the digital inclusion theme on Thursday, uh, 4.40 to 6 p.m., unlocking the digital potential of DLCs. There are a lot of policy challenges that we want to discuss uh, in multi-stakeholder for Africa and for uh, the developing countries, and we invite you all to be there with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Osam. Uh, thank you so much, Chair. My name is Yolanda Mlonzi. I'm from South Africa. I work for Google. Uh, this is just a short one just to announce that we will be having a reception um, at 5.30, and everyone is invited. It's a Google reception inviting Africa delegation as well as Latin America. It will be just outside um, the UN zone by the foyer. So please uh, make your way there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think uh, one, one final note. Yes. Uh, sorry, one final comment from me. Um, the, the Ghana delegation is very, very honored to have among us a very active member of parliament doing a great job in ensuring a great internet in Ghana. And uh, if you don't mind, I'd like you to acknowledge the presence of Honorable Sam George, member of the Select Committee on Communication in the Parliament of Ghana. Thank you very much. I think with that, we come to the conclusion of this session. We thank you very much for staying here all the time, and uh, we appreciate. And hopefully, the next ones, we are going to have more time and interpretation. I thank you again, and um, uh, I wish you uh, very good uh, meetings here during IGF. Thank you very much. <laughs>